Hello world, I am Strawman Atheist, here with a guest video for Black Sofa. I normally do videos on religious mythology, but today I'm doing something a little different. While researching my last video on the devil and demons, I came across a few articles. I touched on the subject of mental illness and demonic possession in the past, but I had no idea that people still believed in that. Really, I'm not making this up. People in the Western world believe that demons cause mental illness. I'm going to go ahead and warn you that you may need something to prevent you from facepalming yourself to the point of brain damage. Let's start off with what is mental illness and why do people think demons possess humans. Also, I'll be sourcing medical information and related info from the Mayo Clinic website. Mental illness refers to a wide range of mental health conditions, disorders that affect your mood, thinking, and behavior. Examples of mental illness include depression, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, eating disorders, and addictive behaviors. We know for the most part what causes mental illnesses. These are causes can be divided into three categories, inherited, environmental, and neurological causes. Inherited causes are in your DNA, and research has shown that many mental illnesses can be passed down from parent to child. Environmental causes can be things like accidental exposure to chemicals before and after birth or circumstances in your life such as emotional or physical abuse and trauma. Neurological causes are a little harder to define. They come from your brain's chemical makeup and can be exacerbated by the previous causes. A few well-known mental illnesses and disorders are schizophrenia, depression, PTSD, anxiety, and multiple personality syndrome. Each of these have symptoms and signs that are easily recognizable but not everyone who is afflicted by these disorders show every symptom, and some people show no outward signs at all. Because treatment requires people to know that the patient has the disease, it may be difficult to treat them properly. You can thank centuries of persecution for that. People would rather suffer in silence than reveal that something is wrong. Then comes a tedious process of treatment and symptom management strategies. Rebalancing neurotransmitters is difficult because they can be unpredictable. I will add that mental illnesses aren't the only diseases ascribed to demons by the religious. Some other things are like epilepsy and leprosy. Merrill Unger was a theologian in the mid and late part of the 20th century who wrote many books of commentary on the Bible and demons. In one statement he's quoted saying, The demon enters, it is true as a squatter, and not the owner or the guest of someone who has the right to be there. He comes in as an intruder and as an invader, an enemy. But come he does if the door is opened by serious and protracted sin. This is very much in line with the beliefs from the Dark Ages, where people believed that demons possessed you if you sinned. You would become a pariah simply because you were sick. Victim blaming much? Believers say that demons are under the command of Satan, and they try to pull people away from God, and once they've done that, they can control you and the environment around you. This is because they believe that Satan is the ruler of earth. He and his demonic legions will cause natural disasters, war, and sickness to destroy people's morale and turn them from God. Many times the story of Job is cited when people question why an omnibenevolent God would allow this. In short, it's a test because God made a bet with Satan. Yeah, they really believe that. Illness is just another tool they use. According to this article by Dr. Robert Jeffries, Illness is the result of original sin that we inherited from Adam and Eve and from our life choices. He makes this distinction by citing Mark 1, 32-34. That evening, after the sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. He says that because Mark made this distinction by separating it into two separate sentences, that means that not all disease is caused by demons. Well, if it's in the Bible, then it must be true. He then goes on to talk about mental illness, where he says, When I asked the Christian psychiatrist about the relationship between mental illness and demonic activity, she responded with her own question. If mental disorders are the result of demonic activity, then why do symptoms almost always disappear when treated with the right drugs? Good question. Yeah, that is a great question. I wonder why treating people with the proper meds cures illness. I guess we'll never know. He continues with this statement, and I can agree with it up to this point. 
Our thoughts and emotions are directly traceable to a series of electrical and chemical impulses in the brain. When the brain does not function properly, drug therapy can restore the natural balances that God intended. However, our thoughts and emotions are more than just a series of electrical and chemical impulses. There's an immeasurable, though very real, spiritual component that influences our thoughts and emotions. Positively, this spirit component can protect us from anxiety and its attendant consequences. Real quick, I would like you to think about this. Why would a loving God build such a complex system of neurotransmitters with so many negative feedback loops that a few minor imbalances can snowball into something so disastrous for those afflicted? He closes his article by saying how no Christian can be afflicted by possession and some spiritual nonsense and then that we should trust God. The same God that he believes made all of this. Sounds more like an abusive relationship to me. Do what I say or I'll fuck your life up. In this article by Father John Bartnick titled Differences in Demonic Possession, Mental Illness, Depression. Hold on one second, I need to fix something. There we go, much better. In the article, the priest explains that demons use the seven deadly sins of greed, lust, anger, sloth, pride, envy, and gluttony to externally influence us and possess our bodies but not our souls. Why not the soul? I guess demons need something that's actually real, like a body. He then says how it's a mystery why God would allow this. It's only a mystery if you believe. If you're like me, you know it's a load of crap. He goes on to say how you can differentiate mental illness and demons by the things in a person's life and spouts a line about occult practices and that the possessed react to venerated objects. I don't know about you, but I've never seen someone's head spin backwards, eyes go black, or skin blister and burn in the presence of these items. I wonder what would happen if in one of these cases someone was secretly given holy water and never told about it. I'd wager a lot that nothing would happen. Possession isn't limited to the Abrahamic religions, though. A notable one is the spirit possession from Uganda called Sen Ken. No idea. In an article in Psychology Today, Dr. Graham C. L. Davy cites a 2012 study that looked into the preteen and young adults in northern Uganda. In the study, they compared possession cases between normal years and those who had been forcibly conscripted into the Lord's Resistance Army. You know, Coney 2012. Fuck that guy. Yep, that bastard is still at large. These former child soldiers reported that their own personalities had been overtaken and suppressed by spirit entities. These possessions were linked to violent and sexual trauma experienced by the child soldiers. The horror they experience is obviously a trigger for these cases of what's obviously a form of PTSD. Their lack of understanding on the physical reality led them to attribute their suffering to a spiritual entity. It's sad that this kind of thinking still exists in our world today, and it's an issue that does need to be resolved. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something today. A big thanks to Black Sofa for letting me do this. If you like this video and like to see more of my work, you can follow me on Twitter, at The Straw Atheist, and sub to me on my channel here on YouTube. Before I go, all links should be listed below in the description, and there's also an article that was just too crazy to cover. It's by a board-certified psychiatrist that helps priests determine whether cases are possessions or mental illnesses. It reads like something out of the X-Files. Well, so long, and I hope you all had a wonderful, heretical day. Run it all cost. Come on, keep on, keep it up.